Big City Thomas, a crossover special, written and told by Kiefer Adams. The tugboat, for its size, is the most powerful craft to float, and the star tugs and the Z-stacks are the power behind the docks and waterways that make up the big city port. The big freeze had come to an end, and the tugboats of Captain Star and Captain Zero's fleets were back at work at the big city port. They were to expect a very important visitor, but an extra arrival caught them all unawares. It was none other than the notorious gangster Johnny Cuba. During his last visit, he had been captured by the authorities due to his past rivalry with Captain Zero. But he had since escaped and was not only seeking revenge on Captain Zero and the Z-Stacks, but now he wanted revenge on Captain Star's fleet too for their involvement in his last arrest. He stayed out in the estuary, planning and plotting, but he had no idea that the big city port was to be getting a visitor of their own. On the island of Sodor, the fat controller was pacing the platform of Ellsbridge Station, waiting for Thomas to arrive. James was also waiting too. At that moment, Thomas came panting in with Annie and Clarabel. I'm sorry I'm late, sir, he panted. You're right on time said the fat controller. Thomas, I have a very special announcement for you. Thomas was surprised, but the fat controller continued. Captain Starr of his star tugs of Big City Port has sent me a letter regarding some extra help around the railways of the harbour. Would you like to help the engines at the port for a week? Thomas's mouth gaped open. I'd be delighted, sir, he said. Thank you. Can we all go, sir? asked James. You all have work to do, laughed the fat controller. Thomas was very excited. When do I leave, sir? Next week, said the fat controller. So you better get yourself ready by then. Yes, sir, I will, sir, said Thomas. And he scampered away, whistling with excitement. James was disappointed that not all the engines could go, but he was secretly pleased for Thomas as the fat controller hopped onto his cab and took him back to the big station. A week later, Thomas was ready to set off for the big city port. A ship had been docked to take him there at the harbour near Edwards Branch Line. As Thomas was getting ready to leave, the fat controller, Toby and Percy came to see him off. Good luck, Thomas! said the fat controller. I hope you have a wonderful time at the port, and I hope you'll be a credit to my railway. I promise, sir, said Thomas. Be careful while working at a harbour, Thomas, said Toby. I used to work in one myself before I came to Sodor. It can be busy. I'll keep it in mind, thank you, said Thomas. And I'll take care of Annie and Clarabel until you get back, Percy promised. Thomas was very grateful. He gave a sharp blast of his whistle and set off for the harbour. The fat controller waved his hat like a flag until he was out of sight, shortly faded away with the chorus of Toby's bell and Percy's whistle. A day or two later, Captain Starr had sent out his tugs for their morning's work, but he kept Ten Cents, his switcher tug, behind. Ten Cents? We are expecting Thomas the tank engine from the island of Sodor this afternoon, he announced grandly. He'll be working with us and the engines of the port for a week. Please make him feel welcome. I'll do my best, Captain Star, Ten Cents promised. I know you will, said Captain Star. For now, you're on barge collecting duties. Off you go now. Ten Cents gave a blast of his hooter and set off for work. But as he left, neither he or Captain Star were aware that one of the Z-Stacks, Zip, had been listening to the entire conversation. Or so he thought. Zip hurried over to the Z-Stacks dock, which was opposite the Starfleets. Zack, Z, 
Zebedee, Zug and Zoran were already there. You won't believe this, he cried. I've just heard that Captain Styles ordered a new engine that's going to work with the Star Tugs. We might be out of a job. Don't be stupid, you blithering idiot, snapped Zoran. But what would Captain Star want with a steam engine? He's already got that goody two-wheeled puffer and that little owl to look after. And, and this, this is coming, coming from my fleet, who recently got us into trouble with the fire brigade for jamming a fire barge across the creek, roared the voice of Captain Zero. I want to make this fairly clear. Anyone who crosses paths with me or my Zeros will suffer dreadfully. Is that understood? There was a chorus of mutters and, yes, Captain Zero, amongst the tugs. Now then, off to work with the love of you, ordered Captain Zero. And the Z-Stacks, apart from Zoran, all left. Keep an eye out for this engine in question, advised Captain Zero. You'll never know with visitors these days. Zoran completely understood. When afternoon came, Thomas was finally docked at the big city port. He was amazed with his new surroundings. Even his driver and fireman had to admit it was such an incredible place to be. As Thomas was being unloaded from his ship, he noticed a little tank engine shunting flatbeds nearby. Hello there, the engine whistled. You must be Thomas. We were expecting you. It's great to be here, said Thomas. Do you know I can find the star tugs? Ah, <laughs> they're everywhere, pet, chuckled the engine. My name's Little Owl. He'll be working alongside me and Puffer, but you'll meet him in good time. Thomas was very grateful. But if you want to find the star tugs, said Little Owl, just follow the many bridges we got. Our railway crosses the port left, right and centre. Well, thank you very much, replied Thomas politely. He was soon steamed and was on his way. Little Owl was very impressed. We should have more engines like him more often, she chuckled. And she casually went back to work. I don't see the point of having another engine working at the port, complained Top Hat to Ten Cents. Besides, we've already got Puffer and Little Owl to worry about. But this engine's a visitor, advised Ten Cents. He'll be working with us mostly. At that moment, Thomas crossed over one of the bridges. Excuse me, he called. Are you members of the Starfleet? That's us, mate said Ten Cents. You must be Thomas. Welcome to Big City Port. That's Thomas? exclaimed Top Hat. Well, I was expecting something bigger. I don't see why Captain Star had something small to do such big work around the port. Honestly. And Top Hat chuffed away to his railway barges. Thomas was rather hurt. Don't pay any attention to him reassured Ten Cents. You'll be all right. I'll show you to one of the yards you're going to work at. It's not far from here. Thomas felt a little better getting to know Ten Cents as the star switcher led him to the shunting yards where he would work. Out in the estuary, Sunshine, the smallest of the star fleet, was carrying out distress calls. He hadn't been lucky yet, but the old pier outside of the port had made him feel a little concerned. He turned a corner and was surprised to find that it was blocked with old coal barges. He was just wondering whether to report the matter to Captain Starr when... Well, 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 what do we have here then? Sunshine froze when he saw the mighty shape of Johnny Cuba before him. Uh, Cuba? Oh, what are you doing here, man? cried Sunshine. Making sure that you don't escape, Johnny roared. He left his engine, reversed, and quickly blocked Sunshine in with more barges that were hidden behind him. You can't do this to me, wailed Sunshine. I think you'll find I can, mate, roared Johnny. Captain Star and Captain Zero are going to pay for my last little venture. If they ever want to see you in good working order again, I'm sure they're going to pay handsomely for your release. <laughs> at his own wit, Johnny Cuba sailed away, leaving Sunshine frightened, wondering what he had gotten himself into. Meanwhile, Ten Cents had shown Thomas the yard he was going to be working at. 
the little tank engine was so far performing very well. I must ask Ten Cents, said Thomas. Who is this puffer? Oh, you'll meet him in time, reassured Ten Cents. Little Owl said that, muttered Thomas quietly. Both Star Tug and Tank Engine were then interrupted by a shrill whistle from the Coast Guard. Captain Star has confirmed that Sunshine has not returned from his distress calls, he said. Have any of you two seen him? I haven't seen him since this morning's briefing, replied Ten Cents. The Coast Guard then looked at Thomas. You must be our visitor, he said. Do you know anything about this? I couldn't tell you if I knew, sir, said Thomas. However, when I was crossing one of the bridges to find the Starfleet, there was an old pier just outside the port, and I think I saw a tramp steamer hanging out there, and... Was this tramp steamer blue with rusted rims? asked the Coast Guard. I think so, yes, began Thomas, but... Then that settles it, interrupted the Coast Guard. Johnny Cuba has returned. I don't know what his motives are this time, but I must inform Captain Star and Captain Zero at once. And the Coast Guard hurried away. Who's Johnny Cuba? asked Thomas. He's a past foe, said Ten Cents. Out in the estuary, Zug was also on distress calls as ordered by Captain Zero. He was just passing Dender Rocks when a large looming shape appeared. Well, well, well. Captain Zero's little Zug, growled Johnny Cuba as he came to a stop. No, please, Mr Cuba, I don't mean any harm, wailed Zug. I'm not saying you're going to, smirked Johnny, but if you don't come quietly with me, that's exactly what I'll be giving you. Zug was terrified. Wait till Captain Zero hears about this, he roared. Zero will find out, mate, scowled Johnny. And he's going to pay me handsomely, alongside Captain Star's wages. Zug tried to back away, but Johnny had fastened a rope around his hull. You ain't going anywhere, mate, roared Johnny. You're coming with me. Johnny towed Zug back to the old pier, where Sunshine was still lingering. Two switches. Perfect, he scowled. We'll see if Zero and Star will pay handsomely now. He roared away. Zug and Sunshine did not like the situation they were in and hoped that they would be saved soon. Meanwhile, Thomas had been sent up the port to work alongside Little Owl. Ten Cents was waiting near the old pier. He was just wondering if the Coast Guard would report on any updates when Zoran came in. Here, have you seen Zug? he shouted. No, and I haven't seen Sunshine either, protested Ten Cents. It's not like Zug to come back late, said Zoran, unless one of your stars has caused trouble. Are you serious, said Ten Cents. Are you going to keep doing this every time the Z-Stacks think that we've got one up on you? Well, tell that to this so-called engine that's working for you lot, growled Zoran. Thomas, exclaimed Ten Cents. He's not working for us. He's a visitor from the island of Sodor. He's helping the engines of the port. Well, according to Captain Zero, began Zoran. They were interrupted by the shrill whistle of the Coast Guard. Cuba's been spotted in the estuary, he shouted as he darted past. I need all the help I can get to stop him from escaping. I'll help, said Ten Cents, if Zoran does as well. Me, help a star, dream on, said Zoran. Well, unless you want to see Zug safe and sound, fine by me, said Ten Cents, and he hurried after the Coast Guard. Zoran rolled his eyes and followed the chase. Johnny Cuba had headed out into the estuary to bring some of his criminal friends back to the port so that Captain Star and Captain Zero wouldn't have any trouble with him. Beside him was an old railway pier line with rocks on either side. Little Al had told Thomas about this part of the line, and when he had heard about Johnny Cuba, he was eager to be part of the operation. The Coast Guard had gone on ahead, but Ten Cents was nowhere to be seen. He reared up towards the tram steamer. Johnny Cuba, he said in a defiant tone, you are under arrest for trespassing, kidnap and ransom. 
Please stop immediately. You'll never take me alive, Coast Guard, shouted Johnny. I've bashed you on the rocks once, I'll do it again. Oh, now you won't, roared Zoran. He appeared from behind and gave an almighty biff into Johnny. The tram steamer groaned. Is that all you got, Zoran? For Captain Zero's number one tug, you're certainly the weakest. But suddenly, there was a shrill whistle as Thomas appeared beside Johnny. What the heck? Johnny shouted. Thomas gave a stern look as he backed behind the tramp steamer. His driver quickly fastened a chain around his coupling and threw the other end, which he had lassoed up, to catch on to Johnny's hull. Thomas pulled with all his might, his brakes screeching and his face red. Seeing the operation, a line was thrown to Zoran too, and he pulled hard as well. Johnny struggled and strained as Tencent appeared, cutting him off from any escape. No! I won't be rumbled again, shouted Johnny. I think you have, groaned Thomas. Luckily, the ropes didn't break, and Johnny Cuba was brought to a stop. Well done, everyone, congratulated the Coast Guard. He turned to Johnny. We'll see if you'll escape the authorities now, he said firmly. By sunset, Johnny Cuba was led away from the port through heavy escort, never to return. Sunshine and Zug were freed, and both Captain Star and Captain Zero were very grateful for Thomas's help. You did quite well out there, Thomas, said Ten Cents. Ha, huh, you were certainly brave. Well done, lad, said Sunshine. Thank you, said Thomas. It was the least I could do. Well, you certainly proved yourself here, smiled Ten Cents. Well, they don't call him really useful on my line for nothing, said a voice. Thomas was shocked when a grey tank engine appeared next to him. But besides the new large funnel, headlamp and cow catchers, Thomas immediately recognised who it was. I don't believe it, he cried. Is that you, Marklin? The one and only, he chuckled. But folks round here now call me Puffer because of the steam I make for my new funnel. Then Puffer it is, chuckled Thomas. It's so great to see you. And you, said Puffer. Little Al said you'd be joining us. And well done with Johnny. Splendid work. The fat controller would be proud. I'm sure he will, said Thomas. The two engines then puffed away, catching up like old friends. You know something, Ten Cents, said Sunshine. I don't know who this fat controller is, but I think he would consider Thomas to be a credit to his railway after this. Ten Cents humbly agreed. A few days later, Percy was shunting trucks in the yard. He had missed Thomas all week but had looked after Annie and Clarabel just as he had promised. The sun was just setting and Percy was about to go home when a whistle sounded in the distance. And sure enough, Thomas arrived. Thomas, cried Percy, you're back. It's great to be home, smiled Thomas. Percy then noticed a small flag flapping on the side of Thomas's smoke box. It was red with white and blue stripes and a small star was in the centre. What's that? Percy asked. Oh, this is Captain Star's flag, said Thomas. He awarded it to me. I saved the port from danger. Well done, exclaimed Percy. Oh, everyone will be so proud, Thomas. I tell you what, the little tank engine chuckled. How about I tell you about it on the way home? Percy beamed with delight. He was uncoupled from his trucks and he and Thomas set off back to the sheds, where Thomas hoped a big rousing welcome would be ready for him. Thomas proved that he is not just really useful on the island of Sodor, but he also proved he was just as useful at the big city port, home to Captain Star and Captain Zero's tugs.